Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at working with scenes in Toonly. I'm using Toonly version 1.3 and I am using the Enterprise version, although none of the things that I'm doing here are going to be any different in the regular version. I'm going to create a new video. I'm going to make this my channel intro and it's version 2. Now you can encounter a little bit of confusion as to what a scene is in Toonly because we've got a scene down here, but you'll see up here that we've also got scenes up here. So what scenes are down here is a way of changing from one look to the next. If you want to change everything up, you can just add a new scene. What scenes are up here is elements that include not only backgrounds, but also characters and in some cases also objects. So I'm going to grab this office scene. So let's go and see what's in that. I'm just going to drag and drop it into the main area. It's loading. And so we can now have a look and see what's in here. Well, this particular scene has a background. So it's Office 3 as the background. There are a couple of characters here and they're starting off. Let me just stop whatever that was. They're starting off being idle and then they're going to sit and work on a laptop and then they're going to stand up and be idle again. And there's a trash can that appears and then disappears in the scene. So scenes in terms of what you see here when you click on them are just a background and some characters and maybe even some objects. And they're exactly the sort of thing that you could do yourself. You don't have to use the scene. You could build this up yourself. So it's just sort of like a shortcut to things. I'm just going to get rid of everything here. So let me just grab these and remove them. And we're going to start all over. And I'll delete this background as well. So we've got an empty scene here. I'm going to build mine up by hand. I'm going to the backgrounds area. I'm going to scroll down and go and get an office background. So I'm just scrolling down to find an office. So I'm going to use office one here. It comes in at a default of one second. If I want to make the scene longer, all I'll do is just drag my background out to wherever I want it to be. But I've got an audio track that I want to paste everything to. So let's go to audio. I've already imported. I just uploaded my new sound. So I've got my channel intro here. Let's just drag and drop it onto default. Now I'm dragging it onto default rather than music because I want to be able to lip sync my character with it. And you can't lip sync on a music track. You have to lip sync on the default track. So I'm just dragging this out. What I'm looking for is quiet periods in my audio track where I've taken a breath. And that's going to be a nice logical place for me to move to a new scene. I'm just going to right click here, make sure it reads play through. So that's checked. That's really important because when I add a new scene, I want the track to continue. And the way I do that is just by adding a background. Now you can add just a plain background if you want to at this point and just size it so that you can see how things are going to break up. You don't actually have to put in your background that you plan to use at this stage. You can just put anything in here basically as a placeholder. Now I'm looking at this scene here and I would like to change halfway through. I want my character to be in position. I want the background to change, but not my character. If you want that to happen, it's better to add a second background into a scene. So let me just show you what I mean by that. Let's go and get our character. I'm just going to size her up a little bit. I don't want her to bounce, so I'm going to right click here and her intros are going to be instant and so is her outro. So don't want this bounce effect. I'm going to set the type to lip sync so she will lip sync to this track. I just need to set the track to the track I want to use and that has to be the track that's in the default area. So I'm going to click save. My background is also going to bounce, so I need to turn off any entrance effects. Just like everything to be nice and stable. So let me go and make my character appear and she's lip syncing all the way through this particular video. So you can see that she's working just fine. But about at this point, I want to change background. So I'm going to move my playhead to this point. This is where I want to change backgrounds. It's important that you locate this in the right spot before you start this. And what you'll do is drag and drop in a different background. So let's go and get the next office background. I'm just going to use the second one. So let's go and get office two. 
play heads in position, drag and drop this here. And you'll see now that's changing to Office 2. If I right click it, I'm going to turn off the entrance effect because I don't want it to bounce. Let's go and play this. So you can see that my character is just continuing on with her lip sync and the background is changing because I've been able to add multiple backgrounds into a single scene in Toonly. That's a really nice way of having a character just continue doing what they're doing and still have things changing behind them because it is very difficult to place the character in this second scene exactly where she was in the first scene. So sometimes it might be worth working with longer scenes rather than multiple scenes. Now when you're working in Toonly and want to move from one scene to the next, just click on the scene. I'm going to put my character in this scene, so let me just go and grab her. And of course I need to reset all her settings. So let's just put her on instant. Let's make her lip sync. And we'll tie her to the track that we have here. I'll just click save, stretch her out so she's here for the full length of the scene. Now you'll see that over here you also have your scene so you can do various things related to the scenes here in the scenes panel. For example, you could rename a scene by just clicking on it and you can get in here and just rename it. If you don't want to use this panel, you can just click there to hide it. It gives you a bit more screen real estate because here you can quite easily switch between your scenes and you can also add a new scene at this point. Now to be able to actually see and work on the scene, we're going to need a background. So let's just go and pop that background in and we'll stretch out this background to match the track that we've got here. Now we've got a lot more track here. You can see that there's plenty of this. In fact, this entire audio track is probably about one and a half minutes long. Let's just go and save this and let's go out to my video so we can see what's happening here. You can see that we've got three scenes in our video, but it's only registering as 20 seconds long. The reason for this is that the audio track is not being counted as part of the length of the scene. Now let me just go and start this one up again and let's just measure things. So here we've got a track which is nearly 14 seconds here. Let's count it as 14 seconds. And here we've got another bit of it which is six seconds long. So that makes 20 seconds. Here we've got another nearly six seconds, but it's not being added to the length of the video. And the reason for this is that there's nothing in here. There's just a solo background. So Toonly's not actually counting this as content in the video, even though we've stretched it out. So when you go to my videos, just be aware that the counter is only going to be counting the actual length of scenes that actually have some content in them, objects and characters and stuff like that. So it can be a little bit weird to sort of see something here when you know that you've sort of prepped it out to be much longer because what I will typically do is come in and add my scene. So I'll come in here, add another solid background. I'm going to stretch it out because I want to sort of start working out exactly how everything's going to look. So there's another element. Let's go and add another scene. I'm just going to drop in a background just to be a placeholder. I'm going to stretch it out so that I can sort of match it to my audio and then I'll add another one. And so I would be doing this all the way through to start off with. So I'm clear as to how many scenes I've got to work with and where I am exactly. Let's just save it. And let's go to my videos and you can see that it's still only 20 seconds long even though it's got six scenes. It's just not registering those sort of, if you like, empty scenes that we have pre-created. Now inside scenes you can also get characters to do multiple things. So let's go and grab scene two. I'm just going to put a background in behind her and then we're going to get her to do multiple things within this scene. So let's go and get Office 2 and we'll just drop that in behind her. Now because we've already got her in position and because she's this long on the timeline then the Office has also appeared that length on the timeline. All I need to do is to turn my entrance animation off. Now she's in position here, but what I want her to do is to change behavior. So I only want her to lip sync for a little bit. So let's just go and 
stop her lip syncing at this point and say that at this point I want her to sit down and work on a laptop. Well, I'll click here and I get an animation setting for this current character. So there none of the entrance or exit effects being able to be selected because we've already done that. All we want to do is add a behavior. So what I want her to do is to work on a laptop. Now I can trim this. So what I want to happen is that I don't want her to be standing up at the end. I want to leave her sitting at the laptop. So I'm just going to trim that ending off because I don't like all this movement. Let's go and test and see how she looks. And let's just make sure that everything's sized correctly before we do that. So you can see that now she can do two behaviors in the one scene and you can add additional behaviors should you wish to do so. So there are some basic things to know about working with scenes internally and working with your characters within those scenes. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope that you've learned things from it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell so that you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.